hello, hello, hello. Hopefully that isn't too loud. Try and adjust my headphones. I'm professional. Definitely set this all up beforehand. Welcome. Hello and welcome to January World Records for 2024. It's a new year. We had an incredible last year and we are ready to get rolling. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 record holders in the month of January. Jay Height, top of them all, absolute legend. We got a lot of good names in there. Some new ones, some old ones, some returning ones, some everything. So without further ado, uh, let's have a look. Any more stats that I remember? Uh, 152 total records, 102 unique maps, and 133 videos we have for this period. We have got a bunch of uh, bunch of records to watch that have been specifically picked. I can't remember where the specifically picked ones end. Yes, I can. That's where they end. Uh, once we get into the VP maps, that is where the specifically picked ones end, except for VP10, which has been specifically picked. I and Amino pretty much picked all of these. Thank you very, very much, Amino, for sending me all these. Yeah, let's actually do them without further ado and hop on over here. Okay. Kota Race, one of my favourite uh, favorite maps with this sort of thing. Because it's just so weird, like, you know, that, that's like an ender pearl from Minecraft. Who thought we had that? It's, Kota race maps are super weird and super technical but yeah the, the teleportation grenade and then I, I just enjoy this map really really cool map really good run everything really well engineered here this is a tricky bit I'm surprised there must be a way to get up there with the teleportation grenade in one throw, but no one's done it. So I'm going to say it possibly isn't. There we are, crossing the line. Westminist, I don't know how you say the name of this map. But another run from Amino. Not all the runs that Amino suggested are their own runs. But the first few are. And they're good runs. Took a look at one or two of them already, but I can't remember them because it was a little while ago. I was sent these before the month even ended, I think. Uh, this is super weird. I, I, I have no idea. I've watched this a few times, this map. Um, not specifically this run, I don't think, actually. But I've watched this map a few times, and I have no idea what the route is. I'll be so lost playing this. But it's a super cool weapon combo map with uh, triggers. Hit triggers and stuff like that. And some technical strafe just like that. Ignore the advertisements. Beautiful rocket stack there. Absolutely stunning. 
Yeah, I said it last month, but I'm so glad that we're getting rocket stacks in this game. VP10 then. I believe that this is just a super tricky strafe map. As you can see already, some almost like CS surf elements where you got to do really difficult, precise movements and then gain your speed after. It looks so good when it's done fast, but so th this makes it look easy. We always watch the ones that just make it look easy. But uh, that's no. It's a five minute long map as well. Like, so we don't have perf. We, yeah, five minutes. After two, I tend to think you're probably not going to have a perfect run. But I believe that this is, you go through the red section, then the blue, then the yellow, then the green. Don't know if you have to do it all in one specific order, potentially. Or at the very least, the checkpoints might show up in one specific order, so you might as well. But the, it's incredible, the runs. I... I need to get onto some of these maps and start properly grinding them. I've tried. It, is, it takes a special special frame of mind to put yourself into these maps. They're incredibly difficult to grind and get good times on, you know, because it's your first run, probably going to take you 20, 25 minutes, maybe in half an hour, and then you can knock it down to five minutes. You know, this. They're big maps. You see now, saving under a second. We're two minutes into the run, and saving under a second. Oh, now there's some big time save. This music is fittingly epic. Oh, I've played this bit of the map. This turnaround. Super weird and difficult. Then you just get spat out at high speed and don't know where to go. Again, making this look really that that is difficult. I hit the wall every time. Like this is just making it look easy when it isn't. Avoid the water streams. Really nicely done. I'm interested to see how this fits into the next bit because this really feels like the end of it uh, when you're playing this map singly. That just literally, yeah, so that's the finish. You just drop onto a pad there normally. Yeah, that's incredible. Incredible way to mix the two maps. So I think VP10 is 10 different maps stuck together. Made by the same guy. So we'll see the rest of them later. But individually, they're pretty easy. Uh, you know, you can get through them. Difficult to get right, but easy enough to get through. You know, if you're not going to try a trick 
like skipping that whole section is so you're gonna land and you know strafe it but Amazing run. Amazing run. Crouton Icy from Suplik. This is just going to be an absolutely nutty run that, unless you know exactly how this map plays, you're going to have no idea why it's so fast. I roughly understand that. I'm sorry for yawning so much as well. Wow, that's huge, huge jump. Yeah, these uh, these maps are nuts. There's been a lot of new slick maps added as well through February, so we're going to see quite a lot of slick uh, in next month's video. Or this month's video, depending on how you want to call it. But this is just some, oh, that's incredibly cool. Just really well executed slicking. Wouldn't she go so fast? It's past about 2,500. It's such a fine amount of movement. <laughs> and to be doing that on those, even though he didn't gain much speed, that's going to be the difference between that 0.13 is going to be that uh, extra bit of slicking. That is beautiful. That is a nice one, Farius. This map by Ritho. Uh, yeah, I couldn't complete this map. I tried. I wanted to see how that catch. That catch, actually, as easy as it looks. This bit, bloody difficult jumping up there and then you have to just strafe it out which I wasn't able to do grenade stack it to get across a little bit faster and then you know it's, it's better to just strafe run because if you were to swap back and forth you'd have problems <laughs> and try and grenade you'd, it wouldn't work very well This map looks incredible on the maps and on the previews, like it's a beautiful, beautiful map. You could imagine it almost being a Mario Kart track. What? Oh, wow. I did not know that we were going to be doing cuts like that. So, yeah, you've, I mean, Go through the checkpoints in any order, it doesn't matter which order you go through them in. Just get through them and get to that end. Yeah, so basically it's N64 Rainbow Road. <laughs> now this is a cool this had some fights on it all oh, last middle of last year maybe. But to go sub impressive. Sub 9, that is an impressive, impressive time. Infinity, absolutely wrecking up some of these BDF comps over the last few months. Putting down some really good times on these sort of maps during XDWC. And that is a really good time. So yeah, this is one of the parts of uh, of the records. Well done to Banano. Yes, this would have been Amino practicing. We're now out of uh, the records uh, that were selected by Amino. Look at this. I mean, you almost, th thinking back to that VP10 record, you almost can't tell the difference in the play style between an 18 second and a five minute run. 
It's just mad to me. Absolutely mad. I think we're going to get a fair few of them. This one seems like a different route. Potentially the speed you start with means that you don't want to go and get those or something. Or maybe I'm just misremembering sections. VP gold mine. This... I've not played all of the VPs. I think this is the favourite out of the ones I have played. It's a really cool map. Getting that turnaround is tough. Interesting. Maybe you only have. To, maybe it's tied. You only have to do one of the sections, so you could do the yellow or the blue. Right. Ah, it seems like actually it's all the same. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I think it's all the same. Uh, just different colours. Super nice jump there. You can see the complete difference in the longer run now. So this one very much is a grind for a little bit better optimization. Shiro, absolute master of disaster with the rockets and the grenades. Oh, that just looks like he fell down but didn't somehow. Beautiful through there. And it, it, I think we sure instant stop, instant restart. We'll give it another go. We'll try and get another record. Always. Love those loop the loops. They are just really. Oh, that was so nice. Yeah, the loop loops are really fun. But oh, using that non-slick bit just to absolutely perfectly slow down and stop. That's just. Oh, love it. I mean the, the techie, and then you double jump on there, which is what was missed by Amino on the other one. I think was the fact they didn't get the jump up or potentially got a. Um, Essentially, got a like glue feet. I don't know how to call it, but yeah, you can get stuck to the floor like a step up. That's what you call it. Yeah, load of new records this month, not just on old maps, but new maps. Which is really cool. Love getting new maps. 
Sometimes it can be a bit brutal with the amount of records. A retake on Glue Drinker by Riffo. We saw this map be taken by Malice last month, so uh, of course Riffo couldn't let this one go. He has to be the best glue drinker. It's just how it goes. This map just requires like there's sections of doesn't matter and then there's sections like this where it's, you have to get it right. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, so cuts like that just you can't can't fuck them up. really well through the stairs I think we've seen every, everyone's always stopped on that section of stairs I think it's impossible to actually get up it without but didn't really lose much time getting back going it wasn't a double stopper or anything like that which is good there it is super clean So another VP10 run, I'm going to skip, sorry Amino, just because it's a long run and I think that might have been the actual run, but yeah great run on the previous one. This, this map is just... We saw it last month with... Uh, <sighs> I've got no words. So you jump, you jump, you jump. Then you know the timing. Then you shoot it. And then just... That's just... Just... Uh, slowest playback speed. So we shoot that. Then we wait. Counted in our head, maybe a metronome. Get a ridiculous 1000 unit start. Beautiful rocket on the floor. Then we're going to get the double rocket stack. Absolutely fly off of here. Another insane rocket. No idea when he fired that one. <laughs> We're going to catch up to that rocket, the perfect moment to convert to height, send it round the back into the finish and an absolutely insane world record and again you can just see right at the end, instant respawn, let's go again, let's try and beat it. Malice on a Minecraft map particular importance to me right now because uh, while I was setting up stream and thinking about doing this I was playing some actual Minecraft parkour maps this would be such a brutal Minecraft parkour map although to be fair it wouldn't that nah, wouldn't actually be pretty easy in actual Minecraft parkour to complete to do fast would be brutal same as it is in defrag but yeah nice run sub three seconds uh yeah they broke that map 
Nice for Riffer, sub 3. Huge rocket stack him. So what happens when you give these guys actual weapons that work? Great seeing like consistency in lots of weapon choices. You know, we're seeing every month more and more weapon map and weapon map and weapon map. Which hopefully can slowly mean that weapon maps get more and more points uh, awarded to them on Relax Running. Even though I think quite a lot of these are RR. Uh, sorry, uh, HP. Beautiful. This map, the first time we saw it was Jaska testing things. And for some reason, being... It was like a 10 minute run or something and he was just unable to make this next jump. Which... Yeah. Oh, this was it. He was unable to make this jump, which you can do without that double rocket stack. Because he was just testing, I think, to try and do the double rocket stack. More weapons from Shiro. There's going to be more combined uh, records this month because a lot of rec uh, Morrow was away for a bit of the month, so did more batches rather than. Oh, sorry, did yeah, did less batches of recording, but it means that the records are alphabetical. Whereas if it was every day, then you'd kind of see less, you'd notice less the alphabetical bits of the records. So it's quite a manual process, this whole uploading thing. I get the easy side of it for sure. Just <laughs> smashing a load of them into a playlist and sitting back and watching them, talking about them. Ah, this is the record. So this is the one we already watched. Apologies for skipping the one that we uh, didn't watch there. on deep mine. More and more deep mine runs. This is what happens when you get a new map. You get quite a lot of records on that map for a little while. As it's broken quite often. People are voting it back. Or with all the VP maps voted as well. Uh, automatically the next map in a series it, if nobody votes for a map the next map is just the next one alphabetically so if someone votes for deep mine you end up afterwards the next deep mine this map is super super difficult so this is going to be a great run but it's not going to look like it you got to get as close to those walls as possible without actually hitting them. And then this last corner is just... I mean, that looks easy, but you're on the absolute limit of spinning out and crashing or taking too hard of a turn and losing all your speed. And so much. So much can go wrong, can go right. 
can go every which way. Of course, anyone who's played this game will know that any map that looks a bit blocky is absolutely brutal for just catching you on the ledge. Ooh, nice. You can tell when something like that happens that it's a very well planned route. Yeah, that route's been thought about. I haven't seen that map in a while. Played it for ages. Maps come and go. There's thousands of the things. So each month we see a very small slither of what's what's available and what's possible. This is the one WHT map for this month. I believe it is a, either a retake or a re... There was a fight going on last month between WHT and uh, maybe JH, but I can't remember quite. Certainly WHT was in there with this map. Uh, was it Amnesia? Might have been Amnesia. Or maybe it was just a bunch of people because it was a new map. But yeah, it could be a, an up... I can't remember who held the record at the end, but... Nice, uh, nice improvement. Or retake. Good old classic cool speed one two three slick. It's an absolute classic map in the community. Riffo's definitely getting a lot better at slick. He's always been very good at it, but he's just getting that. It's it's almost like he's. Uh, He'd actually be a really good strafer. He just doesn't think he wants to be a strafer because it's not cool to be a strafer. Arctic mine we go. Seems like out of the 102, 102 unique maps, 153 records. I think all of the doubled up records are VP maps this month. I can't remember which month it was, we did have one that the total records was incredibly close, like within 10 of the total, re uh, sorry, total records to unique maps. Oh, that was a lot cleaner than uh, Riffo's run. Get up there, but that wasn't quite as clean. Yeah, it's back and forth.
Oh, I like this map as well. As it relies on a few step ups, a few double jumps, a few, you know, you've really got to, you know, if you watch here, jump, oh no, oh, that's a new line. Okay. So the normal line there that we've seen before is uh, quite cool. You specifically jump after a double jump and you will just jump, jump, jump instead of taking the slick. And you'll make it up for a shortcut, but that seemed to be taking the longer way, but literally just going, I'm just going to go so fast that longer is faster. Hmm, interesting. Ah, this is the Wasp and Beautiful record. Congratulations. Next. I need to figure out how to make my game look better without uh, being terrible. I might need to just restart my config or something daft. That's so smooth. That sort of map always looks janky, but that was just like, like absolute butter. Put your picture in the overlook. Ah, oh, yeah. It does. <laughs> I was confused there because I forgot that you actually have self-esteem <laughs> and that self-deprecating humour isn't part of your... I only say it because I actually turned decent settings on in Minecraft for the first time today in a very very long time um, because my Minecraft comes Uh, like playing Minecraft on a terrible computer having the absolute lowest settings I still find it weird I was playing today and it is still weird to be able to see through leaves because the transparent bits are just normally black Yeah, it just looks weird. Yeah, I've never... So, I turned smooth lighting on. Which is the thing where it's like... You've got 15 lighting levels in Minecraft. And non-smooth lighting is literally... There's the 15. There's the 14. Whereas smooth lighting allows it to not... To grade between blocks. Um, and I've never had it on because I used to use it as a way to know where to light things up. But now I don't actually play Minecraft to build anything. And I used to build everything underground, so having smooth lighting didn't matter. Uh, yeah, I was like, I'm just going to make, make my game look a bit nicer. I've got a really good computer now. <laughs> I don't have to worry about terrible settings make this game look nice and I should do that with Zonotic because I'm no longer playing Duel and TDM and CTF I don't need to make the game 
readable for other players. Need to not have like super flashy things because otherwise that'll just blind me every time I shoot a rocket. As everybody found when they were doing Hagar climbing in uh, XDWC, default settings are blinding when you're Hagar climbing. There is, so Minecraft's a bit weird. You can make it look really nice without super being super over the top. You can just improve it by making things a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer. The biggest change is to not use the thing everyone does. You turn your brightness up to max. Then you can see so much better. Turn your brightness down and everything just looks better. I'm trying to fiddle with it to work out where, because everyone already plays with brightness max, if you're playing somebody else's thing, which is what I mostly do in Minecraft now, playing parkour maps, uh, sometimes you can't see where the fuck you're going. So, the re B Dubs, who's an incredible builder, recommends 30. Use 30 brightness. Um, he actually played a trick on all of his audience by over the past year during 2023 slowly turning the brightness down, which is incredible. Yeah, speaking of blinding maps, it's I've yeah, it's it's gonna be it's weird. Do you know what's weird? Why do we constantly fiddle with our underscore ambient in Xenotic to try and make everything work? I've never had a problem in Quake 3. Like, we have this in here, but in Quake 3 I've just, for some reason, like, is it Xenotic's... Yeah, the maps are made for Quake 3, but we piss around with maps made for Quake 3 in Xenotic. It's not like, oh, it's made in Xenotic, we need to set the R and score ambient to this. It's made in Quake 3, we need to set it to this. It's like, every map in Xenotic has a different ambient level that you want for it. To the point where you even have a bind, literally just to turn brightness up and down. I think that's the first time I've ever seen Electro used in a... Uh, in Defrag. Yeah. No, I just found it weird cause, like, yeah, I do the same. Change the thing in Xenotic all the time, never change it in Quake 3. And I've played maps from all sorts of eras while doing DF comps. Like, I understand it. I never had to change my R underscore ambient for uh, XDWC because every map was made by Ash. Well, except for the one that was made by Cool, but they both use kind of the same sort of settings usually. Because I know I've seen some stuff that I've made before where I've seen it on my phone and gone, oh, my screen is naff. <laughs> Sorry. My screen setup is naff and I have fixed it now. My screen is now not as bad as it was. The colour is actually alright. Because for a while it was terribly bright. Now it looks alright. This map looks so crazy without what, um, waypoints on. It's just like, yeah, I'm just going to jump out this window. <laughs> just going to remember where I go. A lot of runs. How many VP maps did we have this month? VP dash. 
we had 26 records set on VP maps alone. Incredible. Yeah, collecting sane defaults is going to be so difficult. Well, I know even for me, I when I'm on my desktop with a one four because one forty four hertz makes things a lot brighter, and I've got a really bad cheap one forty four hertz panel. I kind of regret buying because now I can't use sixty hertz without a little bit of um, wearing back into it. It's really weird because it's only games that I've I care about. I can play games that are 30 FPS on my DS and be perfectly fine. Like I can literally go from Trackmania on my 144 Hertz monitor to the 30 FPS crapshoot that is Trackmania Turbo DS and be fine and not notice. I don't understand why I go from 144 Hertz Synotic. 60 hertz on my laptop with the same mouse, the same input delay, the same goddamn keyboard because <laughs> I have two almost identical setups in terms of peripherals because I just things have to be the same or have to be incredibly different for me but um, yeah I use, because my screen I've got that I'm using right now, my 144 hertz on my desktop is so bright I use different R underscore ambience when I'm just changing them around. Like I'll use usually 10, 0 and minus 10 on this. Whereas on my laptop, I'll use 0, 10 and 20. They're kind of where I start. If I turn up to a map and it's like, oh, this is brutally bright. I'll just drop it to 10 less. But yeah, I don't go minus 10 on my laptop. So it's literally a difference between setups. Same default is going to be impossible to get. Unless you start gaslighting people and going, well, you know, you've got the wrong, uh, <laughs> you've got the wrong setup. You need a better, you need to set your monitor display settings up, color correct them, stuff like that. And like you say, some people play in front of a big old window and they don't really have a choice in that. Um, yeah. Like I played... I've seen... So I've seen... Amino do the full run of this map. Took red. Banano did the VP first VP quad we saw. Took yellow. Now we've got Riona on blue. Let's have a look. Have we got any more VP quad? Ah, oh, we haven't got another VP quad to be able to have anything. This is the 69th record now, Nupslick. He broke this record. This, this is rubbish compared to what he did uh, a bit later. It is an insane map. I mean, I'm happy with like a 12 second time or something. I'm happy with. Sure. Uh, 56th place with a 1062. I'm happy with that. Damn, that was a year ago. <laughs> that was when there was a huge grind going on with this map. Yeah, a year ago. For a load of records. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm noticing that, like, all you lot have beat me. Oh, you missed this at the start. Jay Height. I'm going to pause it. Jay Height, the absolute legend, right here. Perfect timing. 22 records. He took it. He's the winner. Currently, as far as completed months go, Jay Height's winning the most records award. So, there you go. Yeah, he's going absolutely mad right now. It's going to be really interesting to see how that, like, lines up. And with Mac Mac return. Spoilers for next month. Uh, Mac Mac return. I say it's probably there's nobody watching this that doesn't play Zenotic. If you if you're watching this and don't play Zenotic, one what are you doing? Like I I kind of understand it, but at the same time, please do tell me what's going on if you're watching this and don't play. Um, especially if you've never played, or like whether that's defrag, it you know. Because I kind of understand, I watch speedrun uh, record videos and all that sort of stuff for various Mario Kart games. I don't play Mario Kart at the minute, I haven't for like the last six months. But I've played most of the Mario Kart series to a decent time trial level. Not competitive time trial level, but you know, like... I'll beat anyone who thinks they're good at Mario Kart level. <laughs> Your dad who won at Christmas last year is nothing on me, but let me all the staff ghosts and stuff like that. But there's definitely people, I, I know this from very famous, you know, virtual sort of level people. There's people who watch those videos and that makes sense because people are interested in speedrunning, but this sort of thing. I doubt there's anyone watching Enmead's uh, Mario Kart world record video that he put out that I need to watch today. Um, which inspired this series. I doubt there's anyone watching that who doesn't play some sort of Mario Kart, has played some sort of Mario Kart, has been involved in the scene. There's no one watching that hour and 45 minute video just for shits and giggles. Or if they do, they're very bored. Look at this record. We've seen it already at the start. It's just like that. You can't tell the difference either between the two runs almost. You'd have to side by side them and slow mo them and everything to be able to see the difference between that and uh, what we had before. It's just mad. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the experience of most people, I would say. Haven't played it, haven't watched any of it. I've watched a couple of videos on Portal speedrunning, and I've never played Portal, but they're all the videos that are very explained in detail, you know. They'll explain all the tactics, they'll explain everything in detail. It's, it, I know for a fact it is boring to watch for someone who actually knows the game, because I've had it in Mario Kart videos where someone's gone, do you know what, this video, and I normally do Mario Kart videos made for Mario Kart players who know what's going on, and then they decide, do you know what, this video is worth doing for the, the masses, for people who've never played Minecraft, uh, Minecraft, Mario Kart before. And I've sat there and gone, I mean, it's a great explanation of how that works, but... Can we cut, you know, this video could have been five minutes, it's 20, because you've got to explain everything. And that's probably how those portal videos that I've watched and those hype, you know. But that's how you get new players, isn't it, really? It's why I try and do the XDWC stuff a bit more explain as much as possible. Oh, I know! He's got that low FPS hold key. We've got to start working now on... Because we, I know we said it during XCWC that we're going to work out what the best net rate is and the best settings and just give them out. 
you know, because we've definitely got enough people with enough difference of internet connections. Like you've got you and Wood Jizzle with reasonably stable but high ping internet connections. You've got, um, like I've got a very good internet connection. We've got plenty of people with good internet connections. We've got a couple of people who've got reasonably low ping but completely unstable. I can do that, I just have to go get my laptop <laughs> and play on Wi-Fi. Always has two packet loss. Or just a bad day on a Friday, uh, Friday evening. That also works. But yeah, we need to work it out and then we need to figure out... <laughs> are we going to put in a rule about this lower, low net FPS hold key stuff? Because, on the one hand, with maps like this, I think it's okay. Yeah. It's it's a tough one, because... Uh, Defrag, Quake 3 Defrag, has rules for competitions that are different to the rules for online play. So people are using binds and macros in online play that they can't use in competition. So there's a bit of a, pre a precedent for us. But, yeah, it's difficult to, I mean, it's difficult to police as well, isn't it? Like, and, because it, I don't think it would be fair to have everybody on the same settings. Because there's going to be advantages and disadvantages. And then it's just getting lucky that the settings we chose are the best for you. The, there's, I don't think there's any way to actually lock it, technically. Like, we can force... We can make most people lock it. But for the people that are actually going to care enough, they're going to change it if they can. You know, you can change it every time they load the map but you're just going to have a bind <laughs> you be like P press P changes it like we all did for uh, when Ash had that map that changed the audio volume and we all just had a bind set up to change the audio volume back yeah I uh, don't... It, it, yeah, it is too hard of a problem to police. The best thing to do would be to figure out what are the best options so that we can hand out the options and just say, here's the best. You know? If you care enough, here's what they are. Fiddle with this if you're high ping, this if you're low ping. You know, particularly low ping. This if you get packet loss. If we can work out some of those sort of things, that would be... Very quite helpful. Such a weird map. Yeah, pay to win on hardware, add luck with how close you are to the server. And how, how your routing is. Because I know... Uh, who was it? It wasn't for... One of the people from England, this XDWC, had better... better ping to Germany than to France. Because... Just the way that the networking happened to be rooted from that specific area of the UK. Whereas for me, France was better. And that's just being lucky enough to live in 
the European side of things where we've got enough servers to spread us about a little bit and have Yeah, no one's carrying the pigeons across anymore. Them farmers. It's going to be so interesting. God, cycling's going to be interesting this, this spring. A lot of farmers in a lot of places <laughs> wanting to make some noise. And you're about to have all your big early season cycling races. Paru Bay, Tour of Flanders. Can't remember any of the Spanish ones, but there's some good Spanish road races. I don't particularly care about one day road races that are actually on the road. <laughs> Outside of the Tour de France and World Championships, I don't care about road racing. <laughs> Paris-Roubaix would be called gravel if it was started today. What did Vert do? Oh. Did he steal your world record or are you just being salty that he's better than you? This map breaks my brain with the constant changes. Fair enough. Ah, pre-run map. Yeah, fuck that. What a bastard. I wish there were a way to see pre-runs. But it's, it's a difficult problem to solve with like the video recordings. You don't want to have it go from the previous death until the end of the run. Because, you know, you, your record might be you literally stood there just for ages. So it's from the start of the run at plus five seconds that you can kind of see the pre-run, but some pre-runs are mad long. So you can only see if there's a pre-run. Fortunately, it doesn't matter too much. Now... It, I mean, it's going to be something. There's just going to be issues in random, random runs. Because... Mm. Oh yeah, it won't, won't be too difficult. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the editing thing... Uh, I don't... Yeah, Ferrius told me something about that magic recording thing that um, we use for XDWC, which is similar to this, what Mara uses for cutting these. Um, like to zoom, zoom to the start of the run. He mentioned something about how to increase the distance and how to edit when it starts. And to think and to um, look into that. of a pre-run map but it's the pro i mean i suppose it wouldn't matter too much the problem would be if you set a record having afk'd for a while after moving like you back yourself into the corner then you go make some tea then come back i don't know most maps don't have pre-runs anyway. And we're all pretty open about when we find pre-runs for the most part.
This is a good run. We'll watch this one again. First zero speed frame looking backwards from start trigger frame. Yeah. You'd have to make sure it was first zero horizontal or vertical though. Because otherwise if you your pre-run included like uh, running down a what you know, jump pad or something. Yeah, I think the best thing we can do is probably to just. Try and uh, try and tell people that they can edit their own demos and set their own pre-start time. Yeah, it's just fixed seconds from the start trigger. If we tell people they can set their own, then they can just go and get people to uh, auto-record demos. That should be a thing. Ooh, that was a nice finish. How do you mean can't trust people? This map is all of my favourite colours. It makes me really happy. I love how just incredibly garishly bright it is. Good map. Oh, no, no, no. I don't mean that. I don't mean, like, for Morrow's recordings. I mean for people to record their own. So that if you were to say, oh, can you send me... How, how do you do that pre-run? That people would be able to render their own pre-run video. Or send the demo across to someone else who can then use the tool to be able to find the start you know or because the the tool has two options the recording tool has two options one of them is skip to the start start as an otic recording the other one is skip to the start and then just play normally which allows you to either do it for a stream like i do for xdwc or do it for a um, for a live rec like full speed recording, which is how I did all the background footage for XDWC. Instead of like leaving my computer to bloody run for two hours, because um, Zenotic recording is recorded at four FPS, and then speed it up. They run at four real FPS, and then you know set it to sixty FPS in the recording. The you can get pretty much the same quality out of OBS, really. For all anyone's going to actually notice is background footage. But you can't write a script to do that, whereas you can with this, and you can leave it to run overnight. And you can do it headlessly, because Zenotic doesn't actually need to have a screen running to do recordings. Just needs to have the graphics drivers installed to actually launch the game. This map does indeed have some cool world records. Yeah.
Yeah. This one was sent at the start. This was one of the... Um, one of the records that Amino sent me. Amino sent me a bunch of records to play at the start of the video. I'm hopefully going to remember this time to set the... Um, set the chapters thing up. Like I did for... The, uh, for the year review thing where I did all the record review and then split it up into chapters because then it's kind of like here's your 10-15 minute or not even that well, is for this one but you know here's your important information watch this bit uh, you know if you're interested in Xenotic Defrag and care about the records you can basically get most of the information off of like five minutes. Then maybe watch some of the cool records that I got recommended. And then if you've got loads of hours to watch, just uh, stick this on. Yeah, someday I'll finish some hard maps. We've got some longer maps coming up, I think, because the amount of time I've been doing this is about an hour. My total playlist length is an hour and 50 minutes. I've only skipped one five minute and one two minute map because uh, they were duplicates. Of ones I like Amino sent me. I need to remember to set yours one that you sent me from February aside. Oh, yeah, so this, the back strafing thing with Amino is he had the record on just jump. And I asked the question, because I knew he watched, he, he watches the whole of these. Um, and I said, are you doing that just because of me? And he said, no. It is just the fact that I've done it so many times I can do it backwards. But then he also said, I'm totally going to do it just to fuck with you now. I was like, okay, fine. If I want to, I can use that in, you know, video production. Do a whole, oh my god, over the top reaction to him doing it backwards. But it's just become normal because it's every fucking record. Cause it's a Make, he's made strafing backwards boring somehow. This is just ridiculous. He, he must literally just be staring at a speedo. Like, he's got to just be staring at the ups number. Stare at the ups number, make it to 190, uh, 495 and then just let go of anything other than forwards. But it's just absolutely brutal. <laughs> Skipping the stare at the end was just yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Let go let go of forwards, just don't hold anything. Just jump and just continue your speed. Ah, uh, that one that we noticed was broken. That's broken because the trigger triggers multiple times. You need to hit five, uh, five checkpoints, and it's five off any checkpoint, and it just goes. Brrr. There you go. That's why he crashed into the tree. Unfortunately, we don't have a way of doing glitchless in this game. 
and as I've found out, Minecraft parkour is really, really difficult to do glitchless because the rules around it say that you can't most people say you can't have any sort of bug even if you don't benefit from it and double jump bugs in minecraft are plentiful damage boosting is plentiful so nobody runs glitchless <laughs> everyone just submits to the glitch category and it's really easy to accidentally hit the side of a slime block and get double jumped It would literally be like trying to say that double jumping in Xenotic is a bug and that your run is a glitch to run if you do it and then trying not to double jump. Even on maps that don't require double jumps to complete them. You know, it's, it's more of a challenge running itself to do... Yeah, strafing's a bug. That's the thing, any game with interesting movement, it comes from bugs. Whether it's then added... Actually, strafing in Xenotic is not a bug. It was added intentionally to Xenotic. It was built into the game. Bug in Quake 3... But added intentionally into Xenotic, because Xenotic should have... Xenotic being based on the Quake 1 engine, it should have Quake 1 strafe um, bunny hopping bug rather than uh, Quake 3 style strafe running. It's interesting that uh, Kota races reset you to the spawn point because that is abused in Quake 3 runs, being able to carry sp speed through, but you respawn then you die in Xenotic. <laughs> the other one that comes to mind with everything being a bug is Pokemon um, Red and Blue, the original Pokemon games, and Green for... what's it? Um, the, the any percent category is no wrong warp because you can do the straight to the victory hall trick of finishing less than a minute. Then there's the glitched category where certain glitches like that are banned. And then there's the glitch less category. It's not glitch less as in no glitches, it's glitch less because everything in the game is a glitch. You can't avoid the fact that certain tiles of grass don't actually spawn Pokemon. You can't avoid one in 256. You, c you know, all of this, you can't avoid. It's like trying to do a Quake, quake speedrun without bunny hopping. If you jump twice in a row, you've gained an advantage from it. I should get wide vibe. Hold on. Hold on, adding wide vibe. D -d 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 where is it? Search wide, wide. Wide vibe. Why is it only 115? Oh, I bet everybody uses it on 7TV because they're all plebs. Okay, you should be able to wide vibe now. Might have to refresh your twitch to be able to do it but should be able to wide vibe
Where does he know how to slick? That bit? Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it's difficult to slick on those bits though, isn't it? Or is there something you can do? Because that's what I'd have done. Like, just trying not to fall off. I assume it'll be one of those ones where, slowly but surely, it'll get more and more you have to slick. But consider you don't actually carry your speed from it. Because that's where most... Like there. You want to get good slick there. Because you're gonna you know you do one slick here and there if you get a good slick off of that 10 units a second and you're carrying it for uh for, for a fair while five or six seconds you can knock a bit of time off that Jayhawk, what are you using for wide vibe? Are you using 7TV? Or are you. Do you know what you're doing and you're using Frankface C plugin? Frankface C plugin, best plugin. Better than 7TV, better than best Twitch TV because you can just add the emotes from the other ones. <laughs> and Frankface C has everything else as well I started using it like I used better twitch TV because that was the only thing when I first used twitch then I got Frank facey then didn't care about emotes for ages because I wasn't watching anything that I cared about the chat and special emotes and then I was like oh how do I do this 7 TV thing oh it's just plug it in Frank facey as well which is mint That's my recommendation, because 7TV doesn't have very good extra plugins. And if you're on mobile, I, I apologise. Oh, I don't have 7TV emotes on my feed. That's interesting. My feed can't do 7TV emotes. But my, twi my uh, Twitch can. that oh, I've got wide vibe from somewhere Most of mine are better Twitch TV emotes actually, I mostly use BT TV. Ah, I oh know it can do animated emotes, there's clap.
I do indeed not see those. I don't see those on my Twitch either. Because I've now got the actual website pulled up to check. I'm going to say you spelt wide starage wrong, maybe. Peepo Plus is one. Fish Jam is one. I don't know. Peepo Plus is definitely one. Somehow I'm still logged into Better Twitch TV from before I changed my uh, account. Definitely paying attention to records. This is definitely not the bit of the stream where I just zone out and do other shit. <laughs> Get sidetracked. You'll need to stop setting so many records. That's the problem, really. The problem is that you're all setting so many records that the runs end up being too long. What, just so te you can beat Trauma Queen? You set 22, I believe. 22. Amino 18. I oh know, what a nerd. Two minutes, 20, nice. would be interesting to see if it cost you time to use an item how that would change certain runs oh wow he managed to cut that before he was having to stop on the restart uh, to reset speed but to be able to do that is just incredible you got to be shitting bricks at this point haven't you Yeah, every fish slap. This game's more expensive than Fire and Natasha. No, this isn't arbitrary. Des does in fact set the rules um, for everything, really. 
He's judge, jury, and execute. Oh, not going for the cut at the end there. It's time to be saved there. Like, probably enough to be able to shoot one bullet <laughs> due to Desi's plus 0 0.01. <laughs> probably at least that corner cut, you could uh, save one bullet. Right, that's 3953. 3950. Uh, 5. Get Mario to update these times, yeah? 56. 57, 58. This math is going to get difficult in a minute. Ah. So that's a, a 3958 time, actually. We've officially decided. Sorry, Nero. How are we counting shotgun? Is it per... So that's one? Or are we counting that as, like, all eight? Yeah, it probably isn't world record if you add those bullets. Definitely ain't if we're going to be counting all eight pellets. I think the pretty sure the shotgun shoots eight. But yeah, if we're counting those... Guy's ham. Actually, uh, Vert is okay because he's it costs per bullet. That would be a, an impressive statistic if we could gather it. Because it would be interesting to see... Like, because I shoot when I fail. So if I bonk into a wall, I'll shoot the thing that I bonked into. So I was really annoyed when we had no weapons on that XCWC map. Because I was bonking into walls on the first XCWC map. Going bang. And then... Couldn't shoot anything. Like, oh fuck. What am I meant to do now? And yeah, loads of people do that. If you turn your decal time to infinite, like I have it set to... It's uh, really quite funny to go up to a wall and realise that it is. It's got a. You're like, why has this got a black corner? Everyone's bonked it. Everyone shot it. Oh, that was the end. We're finished. Ignore these recommendations, please. Ignore these recommendations. Um, please do go subscribe to Morris Officers on on YouTube if you have an account that you don't care about the subscriptions for, because it is. A lot of videos. I'm only subscribed. I'm not subscribed on this account. I'm subscribed on my second account. Uh, yeah, we've got loads of records coming up for this month. Look at all these records coming up for February. So that is a fantastic, fantastic month. Somehow I managed to get through that in world record time. I'm not quite sure what I've managed to skip. Yeah, Mac Mac returns in February, and a few other fights that are going on. I'm keeping a good eye on it, but. Not entirely sure about all the details. We'll find out next month. Congratulations to JH for smashing it out of the park with 22 records. Amino, thank you very much for sending me all the records to look at it at the start of the video. If you made it this far, please do subscribe and like the video of mine. This is the only time I'm going to ask right at the end. If you're watching on Twitch, follow. And yeah, I'm going to hope that it's stopped raining and go for a bike ride. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next month.